Howdy, Cleo. Joe Hills here, according as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. I need some help. I got a friend visiting from London, and I can't tell if my ideas for their visit are going to be good or bad. Oh, okay. Well, we can do that. I can, I can, you, you have other British friends. I'm so insulted. Um, I've, uh, I've don't got... be insulted. Be jealous. <laughs> be jealous. You could have flown here. You chose not to. I, you I should did. be regretting your own life choices right now. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. I mean, yeah, my my life choices are questionable at at best. But um, I've got a project I need doing um, under the ocean. I'm not trying to murder you, by the way. Um, oh, but my okay, project cause... is under deep under the ocean. It's a real thing. It's not just a murder hole. Okay. Well, I'm cautiously optimistic, and maybe I'll learn something from this experience that will help me avoid getting <laughs> murdered next month. Yes, by British people. Yay, not murdered by yeah. British people. Okay, I'll, I'll, go, I'll even go first. <laughs> you know, as a historian, I actually recognize there is a lot of precedent for being murdered by British people. But, I mean, um, rude, okay. but absolutely true. Look, it's my murder hole. I mean, not murder hole. Wonderful. Okay, see, I was down in a ravine back there. This yeah, there, is... there's a ravine under the ship. Possibly avoid that. Yes, I will make a note. And 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 down here is where I had one of my many base, uh, my many bolt holes during uh during demise. I lived down here for a while. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I, I had plenty of those too. I I think it'll be fun for people when season six Finity finally does end to uh, try and find all of them. The little balls. Uh, welcome to my, my, my not murder hole. See how not murdery it is? I feel less threatened already. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't, but sure. Um, but this, yes, dirty molly. Uh, like, green lake thing. I need to do the walls because... I really need to do the walls because they need to be sandstone and not rubbish. Mm -hmm. I mean, preferably that last one, not rubbish. <laughs> That's the problem right um, now. You exist. Yeah, it's like uh, somebody... Yeah, <laughs> I would like to think that my existence is not the root cause of most of my problems. <laughs> um, I mean, there but, is like, a way of solving that. That just kind of feels that, like but... blaming other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at a certain point, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I mean, like, we didn't want to say it, like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely a thing. So, Thanks, Leo. You know, yeah. I you know I enjoy uh, t giving it to you straight. Yeah, no, I mean that's 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 good. You know, that's where I need it. Um, so no one needs it. Me giving it to them straight. Just gonna tell you that for nothing. <laughs> anyway, so I've got a friend visiting the United States for the first time, uh, from what, London. Like ever, like ever visiting. Yeah, like they have never visited the United States. Like it's not just their first time visiting me; it's their first time visiting anything. Also, how I mean, should I be lighting this? As I, I mean, don't bother. It's more entertaining to watch you get nailed by creepers. Oh, okay. I just didn't want your ship or whatever to get damaged. I mean, try not to damage the ship, but there's loads of water back there. Okay. If you want to throw so, down a torch um, or two, feel free. So it's, yeah, I'd it's, feel vaguely more comfortable, but uh, I, I mean, it'll be less funny. But my know. vague comfort is not the priority. <laughs> Never has been. <laughs> we we've learned that a long time ago. <laughs> a long uh, time ago, that was a thing. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. So it's my friend's first visit to the United States, mm -hmm. and I wanted it to be a good one. But I don't know a lot about what the expectations are of you know the british when they travel as a as a block basically obviously everyone's going to have their own unique preferences i, I mean we uh, are a homunculus effectively so uh well the effectiveness is part of what makes you terrifying <laughs> yeah yeah it would be less terrifying as an ineffective homunculus so that is true of course <laughs> so okay what okay. are your plans is the question i guess well so some of it's some of it's plans and some of it's like should activities not, or attitudes this? like is it rude if i insist we both speak english so i can practice in case i visit london i mean we feel more comfortable speaking english um but if you decide you want to practice your swahili 
Um, I don't think that's necessarily insulting. It's it's just a thing that you do. It's the unique Joe Hill's difference. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that was on my list is how many times should I use the words the Joe Hill's difference and should I have a t-shirt <laughs> printed with it? But... <laughs> I, I mean, I, I already assumed you had a Joe Hill's Difference t-shirt, and if you don't, marketing opportunity. So one thing we have in Nashville is a full-scale model of the Greek Parthenon. Yes, um, I. you may have mentioned this once or twice. It minute. might have come up. It might have So come I was thinking, like, the British famously love the real Greek Parthenon, but, like, what's a polite way to say, like, please don't steal, steal the Elgin my... marbles? Because we still have ours. I, I mean, we, to be fair, the British aren't particularly interested in your Elgin marbles because, you know, they're not real. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess they're real oh. marbles, but, you know, they're not fictional marbles. No. So just they're, they're, maybe they're just... They're not like in the Toy Story universe, they walk around and talk or something. I, I would pay to watch that version of... Uh, Greek history taught by Toy Story, that that would be a thing. But, you know... We, you know, could we make... I mean, we, you and I don't have the license, but could we make a Toy Story movie set in, like, ancient Greece and it's all these, like, little wooden horse figurines and stuff like that in, like... It, we could say it during a period of great turmoil and it's, like, the kid is a refugee and, I don't know, there, there's something here. There is definitely something here. Oh, it's a zombie. Hi, zombie. Um, Disney, call us. So, Dis yes, Disney, if you want to license this ancient Greek toy story, that is definitely <laughs> your be IP. At all. <laughs> Unlike all the other toy stories. <laughs> Unlike all the other toy stories. <laughs> this is definitely ours. Uh, you, you, you can't just make this on your own. No, no they, they, they wouldn't dream of it. This is... <laughs> Very ethical... <laughs> It's a very ethical company. They wouldn't dream... Disney has never taken an old story and modified it. In any way. <laughs> no, the Little Mermaid. That was entirely theirs. It's genuine. <laughs> Jeez. Why do I get the feeling we're going to get sued by the end of this? Oh. Probably because you have really good instincts. <laughs> I mean, like you're gonna want to hold on to that. That's <laughs> it's not reassuring, that's, Joe, but that's, that's just your body telling you exactly what you need to know. <laughs> I don't. Okay, I don't. So... I, so not steal. Do not please do not steal the Elgin marbles. I mean, I mean your first instinct where that's a bit rude because we're British. We have to steal everything. It's kind of um, part of our DNA. So, but just stating it outright, a little bit rude. Okay, so, like, making her promise not to before I park the car would be too much. A little bit much, because it's in her DNA. She's going to do it if she, if, she, if she wants to do it. So, uh... Okay. You know, you've, you've okay. just got to be prepared for that. It's 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 genetic. It's not our fault. We just, uh, we just steal things. <laughs> but <I'm, laughs> I, I feel like projecting confidence is important. I mean, I mean, we're British. We don't do that either. But you don't project confidence? No, not really. Confidence is, is seen as very un-British. Oh. Not, it's just not done. Well, how do you muddle through the travails of day-to-day -day life? I mean, uh, just just by quietly nodding to each other, usually. Um, and going, mm -hmm. all right. Like at a concert. Uh, we don't really... Uh, I mean, we do do concerts. We can just sort of nod at each other at concerts. But at the moment... It, I mean, if you're greeting a British person that you don't really particularly want to talk to um, and you're just sort of passing by, but you need to acknowledge their existence, you just go, all right. And then, I mean, that's not a question. That's not a, like, oh, I'm fine. That's not an opener. That's just like, yeah, all right. And that's it. That's, that's, that's what you do. Oh, this is really helpful to know. Not because I've ever met somebody I didn't want to talk to, but because people sometimes don't want to talk to me and I don't know the signs. And this is really helpful. <laughs> I go to an. I, I've been. I, I've spoken to an American. I've gone all right, and they've they've launched into this whole kind of. No, this is what's wrong, and I. Uh, this is how I'm feeling right now, and I'm like, okay, this is too much. This is too much. Please, 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 back off. I do not. I do not feel comfortable 
with one knowing this much about your life and two just just having this conversation when i was literally just going okay and and that was all i was doing so it's a, it's a really bizarre moment of time in my life so yeah yeah <laughs> i'm also like recalling all the times i've spoken to you i'm like oh my gosh that was me like eight times Whoops, sorry <laughs> I mean, I still talk to you, so it wasn't that bad, obviously. Um, yeah. So, uh, I try to make my overshares entertaining, at least. They yeah. usually have a, a few zingers in there, some wordplay. I mean, we're friends. So, I mean, I assume. So, um... I mean, yeah, I've been assuming so, too. Like, <laughs> But that's the thing is, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Are, are, are we just co-workers? Is that what we're here? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Are we colleagues? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's bad. That that's embarrassing. If that's the case, okay. Let's just assume we're friends and let's move on. <laughs> okay. So, friend. Yeah, being British is, you know, we've had a whole thing about how British people are recently. You may have heard mm. it on, about it on the news. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cleo, we have the news here, and they criticize the British too. Don't worry. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. I, I hope they critic the Brit criticize the British as much as we criticize the Americans. Um... Well, we probably have it covered. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, not all of our viewers might know what Iron Brew is. Oh. I didn't know what it was until recently when I took a photograph of the uh, but it's British area of the grocery store and said, what here should I try? But and it's was told made to try in Scotland Iron from girders. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and it seems to be some sort of carbonated beverage that tastes like chewing on an iron supplement. Yes. Is that a fair assessment? I, I mean, I hate iron brew. But then I'm not Scottish, mm -hmm. so um, I'm allowed to yeah. hate Iron Brew. It's a very a, a, a Scot. It is the Scottish fed beverage more popular than Coke. Okay, so if I was gonna say like share Sundrop, which I don't know if you've heard me talk about this, but Sundrop is like a grapefruit derived soda that's uh, from the south, and uh, there was a bottling plant near where I went to high school. Oh, okay. Um, it was it was a a beverage designed when it was first conceived, to cut moonshine. I don't know. Do you drink a lot of moonshine, Cleo? No, I do not drink a huge amount of alcohol, particularly um, alcohol that has been brewed in bathtubs. Okay, so moonshine doesn't taste good. So if you imagine <laughs> how, how difficult it would be to make something that could make moonshine palatable. Oh, um, oh. That's 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 not gonna go well. I see. So, I, I so appreciate, by the way, is like the opposite of Iron Brew because instead of tasting terrible, it tastes really good. Okay. And is that gonna be seen as like bragging? Like, look at me, I've got a soda that isn't bad. I mean, or is that an opportunity for cultural exchange? It's an opportunity for cultural exchange. And also, thank you for doing the wall like this. It looks better than my one. It's okay. My one will be fixed later. Uh, this conversation went very differently to how you imagined it, didn't it? No, this is actually <laughs> yeah, it's actually more educational. <laughs> Cause I was gonna be like, hey, we have a Saturn V down in Huntsville I wanted to go see. Like, do you I guys mean, have yeah, a lot yeah. of Saturn V? Oh yeah, definitely go see that. That'd be cool. Is your friend a huge nerd? Yes. I mean keep Good. in mind. I mean, he's your mind, friend. Like... I, I assumed. I just didn't want to presume too much, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I assumed. Joe Hill's friend. Would they be a massive nerd? Yes. Well, yes, they would. That is a thing. I mean, not everybody who hangs out with me is a massive nerd, but, like, the odds are pretty good. Like, like a 90% ratio. Yeah, I mean... Because, like, if you don't want to hear me talking about space all the time, then you probably in the figured wrong, that out. In the wrong place. Yeah, you, place, you, yeah. yeah you, you had every opportunity to get away. You knew what you were getting into by this point. Oh, so, precisely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. But to be fair, um, nerding out about space and stuff is, is, is a thing for you. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know, well, then... 
surely at that point it's on them. Yeah, you know, I want to be a good host. I don't want to be like, you know, <laughs> expecting that they're going to share every interest I have. I mean, but at the have, same time, like, I mean, you're America. You have rockets. Already, yeah. you've got like a massive kind of cultural cachet you can use there. So, Cleo, that's that's a lot of the things I was thinking about doing. I have a few more, but before we move on, are there any things that you think of or that you've known people who visited America where you're like, oh, well, you have to do that while you're in America? Um, I mean, considering I'm actually going to America recently, we, me and my sister have been thinking about that sort of thing as a lot. And to be honest, it's it's the thing that... The, the, the things that you probably take for granted, as in, like, visiting a Denny's is what we want to do. Because we don't have those sorts of things. So, or an IHOP or stuff like that. Like, the weird things that you just wait, sort of take for wait, granted. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is IHOP not actually international? Do you not actually? It's supposed <laughs> to be International House of Pancakes. I just assumed it was everywhere. <laughs> no, we don't have that. I did take that for granted. <laughs> See, I told you. But we don't have those things. We don't have like diners. Diners are mm -hmm. not a thing that is 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 in the in the UK common perception because they just don't exist. So, okay, so diners. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it may that's seem going to go on the list. That's going to go on the maybe pile. <laughs> that's what. No, I, mean. I like diners. Um. But so yeah, I that's, mean, that's, that's... just just. Going out some places for breakfast, that's not a thing we do. I mean, oh. it was really... When I was going... When I visited my friend in San Francisco and she took me to a diner, I'm just like, this is amazing. This, and we're going to have breakfast, you say. We allowed to do this? Go out for breakfast? We don't really, really? Do this the... is You guys don't have... You guys don't go out for breakfast? No. I mean, we do lunch and we do dinner, but breakfast? No, it's not really a thing. Oh, man. And if it is a thing, it's definitely, definitely a London imported thing because nowhere around here do we go out for breakfast. Okay. It is That's interesting. So weird. <laughs> because even in like the small towns in America, I know. There's you... breakfast places. And part of that, I think, is the religious community. People are like rushing out to get to church and then they're like, oh, after church, we'll just get breakfast with a few of the other families we know. Yeah. So, like, no matter how small the town is, if it's big enough to have a church, it's big enough to have somewhere to get breakfast after church. No, we don't. We don't. We don't have that sort of stuff at all. Oh, so that's you so know, neat. and I mean, we have pubs. Okay, so that's our cultural I, capital there. So what's funny is that what there is a diner that was on my list, but it's a weird, um, artistic, like. <laughs> it, it, okay, I'm going to explain what this restaurant is, Okay, and you're going to be like, what? That is far too trendy and weird. So it is a six-story restaurant where each floor is like a different diner, and they have different food, different menus on each floor. That sounds so cool! And, um, and the top is a rooftop bar. Okay, this, this, this is a thing but, that we would never have. But the thing is, I've realized now that, like, if we don't go to, like, a normal diner, like, some of the... Yeah, it's like, going to be like... lost. <laughs> oh, you I just, I'm what? having a very oh, Dora moment. What? We did it! We did it! We did it! <laughs> Have you seen that Dora movie? No! It looks creepy as balls! Oh, it is trippy! <laughs> oh, my God. The junior novelization of the Dora the Explorer book, uh, of the Dora the Explorer film, is... Is like they 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 channeled Douglas Adams' ghost in a seance and forced him <laughs> to explain Dora the Explorer for a hundred pages, and like I'm looking at the Amazon like excerpt of this book because it only has like the first eight pages, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, there's no way this is real. Somebody from the somebody like at the publishing company just sent the like a fake eight page fan fiction to Amazon as a placeholder. Cause they didn't have the real one done yet, but I don't know. So I got the book 
<laughs> through a local bookseller. And here's the thing, too. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just Amazon's well that was poisoned. Maybe somebody was screwing with Amazon. So I went through a separate bookseller and got a copy of this book to read to my daughter, mm-hmm. um, which we did every night for weeks. Oh, it, maybe not weeks, like a week and a half. It wasn't that long. But, oh, my goodness. It is insane. And so then I was like, well, now we have to see the movie because... I don't know how you would make a movie out of this. Weird. The whole thing is weird. <laughs> anyway, like, I just. Oh, well, that's going it's in like, by the it's way. Like I'm getting that thousand yard stare, like Cleo. You don't understand. You weren't there, man. <laughs> you weren't there. You weren't there. You don't know, man. You don't know where I would have seen. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> but anyway, yeah. If you if you have very low expectations. Of like, oh, absolutely! Of just like everything. What? Yeah, like I'm <laughs> watching this film and I'm just like, they, they made choices. <laughs> like choices were made. Choices were made. This is very intentional. <laughs> like, because sometimes you go to kids stuff and you're, they're just like, eh, they're just coasting. Yeah, but I'm just like. They worked really hard to accomplish every part of this. And I'm not sure why. And the funny thing about the book was that the asides that the narrator, like I said, it was a very Hitchhiker's Guide type of voice. Mm -hmm. The asides that the narrator makes are things that I would say when I was reading a book to her. So she had to follow along to, to figure out if it was me making an aside or the narrator making an aside. Okay. I she kept being like, like wait, Daddy, is book. that in the book? Or are you asking? I, I feel like I need to read the book to fully appreciate the movie. No, that's the thing, is the book is full of things like, um, Dora turns towards you and says, can you say delicioso? We're not sure that she can actually see you or hear you, but if you'd like to say delicioso, you can say it now. That sounds amazing. Dora seems to have think that you answered, but we're not really sure. Is that in the book? Please tell me that's in the book. Like, I, I, I'm not, I don't have it in front of me, but it's stuff like that. Like, and it's just running throughout the entire <laughs> story. It's like, um, well, this is all going in the video. Dora, this is uh, basically like, Dora the admired the arrow and said, can you say deadly neurotoxin? If you want to, you can say deadly neurotoxin. <laughs> that is a choice that we will leave it to you to make. Because I bought this book because I thought somebody had screwed with Amazon and I wanted to know one way or the other. <laughs> And I was like, no. <laughs> well, Cleo, we really got these walls up. <laughs> we we did such a good job. We did it. We did it. And I appreciate your advice <laughs> on creating the necessary emotional walls to deal with British people. <laughs> All right. So I've been cleaning up some stuff after Joe went. I made a little ledge thing up there for the water to flow down and... It's a little bit, it's a little bit square, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ease it off here a little bit, I think. Maybe like that, that'll do. And then, and then I need to get the river flowing, get out of the way boxes, the river, river flowing down here a bit under the ground. Okay, so I've got that done and now I've got like a little fenced off area pit where the river goes down and you can sort of see it go down, but you're not allowed there because I said so. Okay, so after um, a fair amount of work on that, I have made some improvements and I have actually finished. But as you can see, there is, uh, there's some stuff going on here. I've actually put in a... Some bubble columns to take you up and take you down. Because I figured people would need to know where they are. So look for the bubble column. 
Um, and then we're into the, I guess it's the Undercity, but I've used like lapis and sandstone because, well, it's all sandstone, but lapis I think works really quite well. Um, and you get these little squares of lapis and, you know, all the lanterns and then you come through and you're out onto the bridge and you've got the waterfall there and the river flows through down there. Can't get through down there, but, but it flows through and then you've got the Dirty Molly. And I am actually really pleased with how this turned out. So thank you, Joe, and thank you for <laughs> thank you for the dirty Molly in itself. Actually, that's actually thinking about it. But yeah, I I, I like this. I thought it was going to take so much longer. I'm so relieved Joe decided that he needed my help, so uh, so I could uh, he could help me. Um, but you know. I guess on that note, I've been Zombie Cleo. This has been Hermitcraft. Class dismissed.